Hello everyone, and welcome to the Stanford Interventional Radiology video lecture series, a primer for trainees. My name is Lotko, also known as Z, and I'm a fourth year radiology resident. Now as a medical student, I was not familiar with the field of IR, and as an early resident, even though I was somewhat interested in IR, I found the IR suite and the equipment they used to be pretty complex. The goal of this eight-part video lecture series is to get you guys orientated to the environment and equipped with some of the basic skills and knowledge to make your rotation more comfortable and hopefully a little more fun. I also hope it'll help you feel more confident and skilled when you start your rotation. As an added bonus for me, if I happen to be the fellow and you're the resident and you watch this video, I'll be able to use your skills from day one. Just kidding. The first part of this video lecture series is an overview of the IR service and how it works. Before I get into the details, I want to give just a brief description of the field of IR. So IR has just recently become an independent medical specialty, and the goal of this field is to treat diseases in all organ systems through minimally invasive approaches. The picture below is from the Interventional Initiative website. I like this picture because it illustrates the breadth of IR. For those who are interested in learning more about what the field does, I recommend going to the website theii.org. It has a bunch of great videos and resources, some of which even feature our own attending. This slide is a general overview of the Stanford IR department workflow. There are four basic components. Performing cases, which is in the middle, the consult service on the lower left, the admissions and inpatient service on top, and the outpatient clinic on the lower right. These components work together to fulfill the needs of patient care. Central to this workflow is performing cases. This is done by attendings, fellows, residents, and specially trained NPs, and it has three main parts. The first part is the pre-procedure preparation. Without going into all the details, this basically includes all of the prep work from once the case is approved to when the patient is on the angiography table. The next component is actually performing the case, and the final component is the post-procedure care until discharge. This includes all the care provided to the patient from the completion of the case until they are discharged from the hospital. IR performs cases on both inpatients and outpatients. The next slide demonstrates how this component fits in with the others. On the bottom is the consult service. The consult service will evaluate patients for which a procedure has been requested, and if the procedure is approved, they will move on to become a case. The admissions and inpatient service, which is on top, has a bi-directional workflow with the case service. For example, a patient may be admitted to the IR service prepared for a procedure, and then they will be sent to the case team to have it performed. Alternatively, patients that have just had a case performed may be admitted to the hospital and followed by the inpatient service. Finally, there is a bi-directional workflow with the team performing cases and the outpatient clinic. For example, once a patient has had a procedure, they may be discharged home if they are stable and seen in clinic for post-procedure care. Alternatively, a patient may be evaluated in clinic for a potential treatment. If the patient is approved for the treatment, they will then be scheduled with the case team to have it performed. The next main component of the IR division is the consult service. The primary task of the consult service is to review, modify, and approve potential cases. The consult service is run by a fellow in conjunction with a resident. The consult service is paged by various medical teams regarding potential cases. And let me tell you, they are paged all day long. But in all seriousness, once the consult service calls back the team, they discuss what the patient needs, select the appropriate treatment, work up the patient with a full H&P labs, and review their imaging. The consult team then runs the case and all the details by an attending on service that day. If the attending approves the case, it is added onto the workflow for the case team. The consult service has a bi-directional workflow with the admissions and inpatient team as both of these services are run by the same fellow in conjunction with a resident. For example, when a medical team has a question regarding an inpatient, they will page the consult team. Another example would be when an IR patient needs to be admitted for a procedure, the consult team will be paged to admit them. In general, the primary function of the consult service is to review and approve cases for the case team. The next major component is the admissions and inpatient team. The main task for this team is the daily management of IR inpatients. After each fellow and resident rounds on their individual patients in the morning, all questions and routine management issues after rounds will be addressed by the admissions and inpatient team, which consists of the same fellow 
and resident as the consult team. A secondary task of this service is to answer any pre- or post-procedure questions from physicians, nurses, or the patients themselves regarding prior or upcoming procedures. Finally, this is a team that will also admit patients for complicated procedures such as complex IVC retrieval. As previously demonstrated, this service has a bi-directional workflow with the consult service since it consists of the same fellow and resident. It also has a bi-directional workflow with the cases team because it not only prepares inpatients to undergo cases, but also cares for those patients which are admitted after a case is completed. Finally, it has a bi-directional workflow with the clinic because patients are seen at clinic after they are discharged from the inpatient setting, or they may be admitted from clinic to the inpatient setting if they need an urgent case to perform. Finally, the last component of the IR workflow is the clinics, which is where we see outpatients to prepare them for a procedure and also follow them up after a case has been performed and they are discharged. This is typically run by attendings, fellows, and NPs. As previously described, the clinic has a bi-directional workflow with the inpatient team because patients can be admitted directly from clinic to have a case performed or they can be seen in clinic after the inpatient team has discharged them. In addition, there is a bi-directional workflow with the cases team because patients are both prepared in clinic to undergo cases and they are also seen in clinic after a procedure. The overall goal of these components is to provide integrated patient care in both the inpatient and outpatient setting while providing patients with follow-up and fulfilling the needs of the referring clinician. Well, I hope you guys made it to the end of this talk without falling asleep and that it helps provide you with a framework for the IR service and where you fit in as a resident. If you fell asleep, that's okay. The rest of the talk will feature videos and they will be more engaging.